Hello P5 students and welcome to your very first online English MLP video lesson. So on today's lesson we're going to be looking at parts of speech. Okay, let's take a look. So parts of speech, as you can see here, English words are divided into different classes. These are different classes of words and they are called parts of speech. So what are the different classes of words? Well, we have nouns, pronouns, verbs, adjectives, adverbs, prepositions, conjunctions and interjections. So first, let's look at nouns, okay? So a noun is the name of a person, an animal, or a thing, okay? Person, animal, place, or thing. So these are nouns. A man, a woman, a boy, a girl, John, and Mary, okay? These are all people and names. We have a cat, a dog, an insect. These are animals. We have a table, a star, an island, and these are things. We also have sadness and happiness. Not sad and happy, sadness and happiness as nouns. These are abstract ideas or feelings. Let's read this sentence. The girl wrote a letter to her friend. As you can see, we have one, two, three nouns in this sentence. A girl is a person. A letter is a thing. A friend could be a thing or a person. They are good friends. Here again, we have friends, but this time it's in the plural form. Now let's take a look at pronouns. Well, if a noun is a person, thing, or a place, a pronoun is a word that is used to replace a noun. Let's look at some pronouns. As you can see, here we have different types of pronouns. We have subject pronouns, object pronouns, possessive adjectives, possessive pronouns, and reflective pronouns. Subject pronouns include I, we, you, they, he, she, it. The object pronouns are me, us, you, them, him, her, it. Possessive adjectives are my, our, your, their, his, her, its. Possessive pronouns are mine, ours, yours, theirs, his, hers, and its. And finally, reflective pronouns are myself, ourselves, yourself, yourselves, themselves, himself, herself, or itself. So what is a pronoun? A pronoun is a word that is used in place of a noun or another pronoun. Like a noun, a pronoun can refer to a person, place or thing or an idea. Let's look at this example. Maria was lost. Here we can see Maria is the noun. Instead of saying Maria was lost, Maria didn't panic. We can replace Maria with she, as Maria is a girl. So we say Maria was lost. She didn't panic. Let's read the next sentence. She checked the flashlight. As you can see here, flashlight is the noun. 
Instead of saying she checked the flashlight, the flashlight still worked. We can replace the noun with a pronoun. So we replace flashlight with it. She checked the flashlight. It still worked. So the next part of speech we're going to look at is verbs. So what is a verb? A verb shows an action or state of being. A verb shows what someone or something is doing. For example, go, speak, run, eat, play, live, walk, have, like, are, is. Let's read this sentence. I like English. Like is the verb. The next part of speech we're going to look at are adjectives. What is an adjective? Well, an adjective describes, modifies, or gives more information about a noun or a pronoun. So they are describing words. For example, big, happy, green, young, fun, crazy, and three. Let's read this sentence. The little girl had a pink hat. As you can see here, little and pink are the adjectives. What do they describe? Little describes the girl and pink describes the hat. So what does the girl look like? Well, she is little. What does the hat look like? Well, it's a pink hat. So girl and hat are the nouns and little and pink are the adjectives that describe the nouns. With adjectives, we have three degrees of comparison. We have the positive, the comparative, and the superlative. For example, this apple is big. This apple is bigger. But this apple is the biggest. So we have three apples. This apple is bigger than this apple. And this apple is bigger than this apple. So out of the three apples, this is the apple that is the biggest. So in the degrees of comparison, when we have a positive one syllable, when we turn it into a comparative, we add ER. And when we turn it into a superlative, we add EST. For example, as we already saw, the positive is big, the comparative is bigger, as we added ER, and the superlative is biggest, as we added EST. Here are some more examples. Tall, taller, tallest, clean, cleaner, cleanest, cold, colder, coldest, high, higher, highest, low, lower, and lowest, weak, weaker, and weakest. Here are some more examples. This girl is happy, this girl is happier, and this girl is happiest. Notice in this example that happy has a Y at the end. 
When we have a Y at the end of the adjectives, we drop the Y and we add I and then add ER. So happy, H-A-P-P-Y, becomes happier, H-A-P-P-I-E-R. And same with happiest. We drop the Y and add I, E-S-T. Some adjectives are irregular. For example, good does not become gooder, it becomes better. And it does not become the goodest, it becomes the best. Good, better, the best. There are some cases when we do not add ER, R-E-S-T. For example, useful. We do not say usefuler, we say more useful. And we do not say usefulest, we say the most useful. Useful, more useful, the most useful. Now let's look at the rest of the examples. We have young, younger, the youngest, sweet, sweeter, the sweetest. And the last one, hot, hotter, the hottest. Notice here that in the comparative and the superlative, we have added an extra T. Now let's look at adverbs. What is an adverb? An adverb describes or modifies a verb, an adjective, or another adverb. Many adverbs end in ly, for example, slowly or quietly. And some do not, for example, always, never, and well. Let's look at this example. I am usually busy. Usually is the adverb. And busy is a adjective. Usually modifies the adjective. So it's not I am busy, it's I am usually busy. Let's look at the next sentence. Yesterday, I ate my lunch quickly. Quickly is the adverb. And in this case, the adverb describes a verb, ate. I ate my lunch. But how did I eat my lunch? I ate my lunch quickly. The next part of speech we're going to look at is prepositions. Prepositions are words that specify location or a location in time. For example, in, from, under. Let's read this sentence. Mike is hiding under the bed. Under is the preposition. Where is Mike in relation to the bed? He is under the bed. Conjunctions. So what is a conjunction? Conjunctions join words or clauses. Let's look at this example. Bill and Mary are cousins. And is a conjunction. It joins Bill and Mary. Let's look at this next example. He didn't go because it rained. Because is a conjunction. It joins these two clauses. He didn't go and it rained. Why did he not go? Because it rained. Interjections express strong emotion. For example, Ouch! Hey! Oh! Watch out! Let's look at this example. Wow! I passed my English exam. How do you think this person feels because they passed their English exam? Well, they say, wow, 
So I think they're surprised. Let's look at some questions from the IPSLE exam. Let's look at this first one. She bought ice cream for. As we can see here, she is a subject pronoun. The answers to the questions are all reflexive pronouns. So we must find the reflexive pronoun of she. Use this table to help you. Pause this video and try to answer by yourself. After you've answered by yourself, we'll answer it together. Okay, so let's take a look at the answer. As we already saw, she is a subject pronoun. The answer must be a reflexive pronoun. So we must find the reflexive pronoun of she. So here we have subject pronouns. Here we see the subject pronoun she. Let's find the reflective pronoun of she. So we follow it all the way over here and we can see the reflective pronoun for she is herself. So the answer is number two, herself. Let's look at this second one. Sophie and blank had to do the dishes all by ourselves. So ourselves is a reflective pronoun. It suggests that there are two people involved. Sophie is a subject and that means the blank must also be a subject. The potential answers are I am my and mine. So you must find a subject pronoun to fill the blank. Again, use this table to help you. So let's see what the answer is. We need a subject pronoun to fill the blank. Which of these are subject pronouns? So the answer is I. Let's look at number three. Blank you coming with me to the fair today. So obviously this is a question. We must figure out if the question should begin with are, is, were, or was. You is a subject pronoun and we have coming and we have today. So we know the subject and we know the tense. With this information, you must choose the correct version of the verb to be. Pause this video and try to answer by yourself. Okay, let's answer. The verb is coming and we have today. So we know it cannot be were or was because they are in the past tense. That leaves us with are or is. Let's look at the subject, you. We know we never say you is. We say you are. So the answer is number one, are. Let's look at number four. Vic did blank than Sam in terms of test results. Here are our options. Good, better, best, and well. Than suggests that we need a comparative to go in the blank. Use this slide to help you. Pause this video and try to answer it by yourself. Okay, so let's find the answer. Good and well are positives. Best is a superlative, which means better. 
as it ends in ER is the comparative. So two is the correct answer. Let's look at number five. Mr. Sam owns a good vehicle, which blank breaks down. Here, we need an adverb to fill in the blank. If the vehicle is a good vehicle, do you think it always breaks down? Often breaks down? Seldom breaks down? Or usually breaks down? Pause this video and try to answer by yourself. Okay, so as we saw, Mr. Sam owns a good vehicle. A good vehicle would not usually break down. It would not often break down. It would not always break down. It would seldom break down. So the answer is number three. Let's look at number six. My brother's writing is not as blank as mine. Notice we have as before and after the blank. This suggests we need an adjective in the blank. Find the answer that is an adjective. Pause this video and try to answer by yourself. Let's look at the first answer. Neatly. Neatly has ly at the end. This suggests that it's an adverb, which is incorrect. Look at number three. It says neater. Neater has an er at the end. This suggests that it's a comparative, which would be incorrect also. Look at number four. Neatest. Neatest has est at the end. This suggests that it's a superlative, which is also incorrect. Neat is an adjective, and an adjective belongs in this blank, which means neat is the correct answer. The correct answer is number two. Number seven. Who do you think is blank than Jane? Just like number four, number seven has than which suggests that we need a comparative in the blank. Of these four answers, you need to find the comparative. Let's look at the answers. Number two is happily. It has ly at the end. This suggests that it's an adverb. Look at number four as happy as. Happy is an adjective, so this is also incorrect. Look at number three, happiest. Happiest has I-E-S-T. This suggests that it's a superlative, so this one is incorrect. Number one, happier, has I-E-R at the end. This suggests happier is the comparative which means happier is the correct answer. Number one is the correct answer. Let's read number eight. I adore my grandmother very much. She is the blank person I have ever met. As we saw in number four and number seven, than suggests that we need a comparative. Just like than suggests we need a comparative, the suggests that we need a superlative. Find the superlative in these answers. Pause this video and try to answer by yourself. Okay, let's look at these answers. As we saw before, EST suggests a superlative, so the answer must be number three, kindest. Number nine, we will visit Australia, blank, June. In this blank, we need a preposition. 
June is the time. Which preposition do we use for months of the year? Pause this video and try to answer by yourself. Okay, so for months of the year, we use the preposition in. So number one is the correct answer. Let's look at number 10. The lion blank walking in the grassland when it spotted a deer. The clue we have here is spotted. As we can see, spotted has ed at the end. This means that it's in the past simple tense. And this suggests that the answer should be in the past continuous tense. Which of these answers is in the past continuous tense? Pause this video and try to answer by yourself. The correct answer is was. What was the lion doing when it spotted a deer? It was walking. Okay, well done. So that's it for today's lesson. Take care, stay safe, and thanks for watching.